Welcome back, guys, to the Non-Farm Payrolls webinar, usual session here on Friday, the uh, obviously 7th on May, which means first Friday of the month, and we are talking about uh, the market in the US. It might be a bit noisy in the background here, which is uh, unfortunate, but uh, on the other hand, of course, you're getting uh, my session here free of charge here on behalf of PD Swiss, obviously, and uh, I hope that we can find some proper trading setups today and really can get uh, going with what we expect here to happen. Uh, Michael says, hey Frank, so obviously I hope sound is going to be all right guys, please let me know if you guys can hear me all right, if everything is uh, working out nicely and also of course if uh, things so far are working out for you guys. Please, since I have no clue also where the markets might move to, if I have no clue also where we might see any further development in this uh, market uh, here for the time being, I would ask for your participation and uh, like to kind of really get uh, some sort of feedback on what you might trade on some sort of uh, potential also where you see some sort of opportunity. And uh, yeah, Kai says uh, he needs a strong dollar. Frank, ich brauche einen starken US-Dollar. Alles gut, super. Schauen wir mal, was geht. Ich brauche auch einen starken Dollar. In Thailand, jedenfalls. Uh, today also we expect, and me at least, uh, that maybe our previous expectation that uh, obviously here the uh, non-farm payroll figure is not coming out as high as expected. That's at uh, 980,000 newly created jobs. If we are looking at uh, what's happening here right now, we can see though that some of our trading positions actually are not as bad as they might look like. Today we started a new opportunity here and that's uh, called the silver against the uh, US dollar market. We've been selling this market after this pin bar. Today our market uh, selling opportunity is uh, looking quite promising. That's uh, at least uh, this trade. I made a bit of a mistake here. I should have traded this on a higher volume, so a slight higher contract size. Uh, which uh, was a bit my mistake, but uh, in light, obviously, of uh, this uh, actual candle procedure, in light of the big news event, I also would not like to take a, a lot of risk here, which means also this market momentum here could work out nicely and obviously also could help us here in order to make some pips uh, uh, to the downside. So uh, market-wise, on the NFP figure, this is uh, something interesting potentially to keep an eye on. On the other hand, we should also look at uh, the gold market, which also had really appreciated in recent uh, market hours. So our gold price here uh, retracing a slight bit from its highs. It looks like some sort of strength in the dollar could be expected. So hoping also with what Kai said, uh, he would really appreciate a stronger dollar. And uh, he also says, furthermore, Australian dollar short, dollar cut long, he would like to see and uh, Arnie said, waiting for the dollar strengthening. So obviously we have uh, quite a few opportunities here and some expectations where we might see a stronger dollar here. And Pete, hi man, good to see you. Anticipating stronger dollar, stronger stocks, weaker metals. That's uh, a very strong statement here. Let's look at our open positions here before we assess the market somehow further. Silver starts to move somehow a bit lower. Pound Swissy, uh, we'll talk about, uh, about uh, in a minute. The Australian dollar, though, is uh, starting also to push somehow uh, to the downside here. The market is not giving us a lot of insights, but uh, I would still stand with my recent anticipation that uh, the daily chart might see some sort of weakness here. Though, if you would look at this here, of course, from the daily market momentum, we could see that this market really blasts through the upside also, offering us some sort of, uh, well, negative momentum for the dollar, which means the Australian dollar could really gain momentum further uh, to the upside. Last but not least, we should also talk about our open position, which is in the pound against the Swiss franc. The Swissy, my name Frankie, is uh, somehow pushing back in a good manner. The market today had moved somehow higher. So off the hourly chart, we saw that this market pushed a bit to the upside. Right now here, we could see that off, and that's interesting here, really off the hourly chart, some sort of negative momentum kicks this market back to the downside. And that's exactly what we would see and appreciate here. Some sort of a, a pound weakening momentum here could be seen. Hence, uh, the pound against the Swiss franc here could offer us uh, some sort of momentum based obviously off the long-term chart. Seeing it from this perspective, that's exactly what I would see it here. The support level, 
resistance, market pushes a bit to the downside, and subsequently we could see that the market also, of course, is pushing towards falling prices, and these falling prices here, uh, of course, were acting here in these couple of days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, today we're at Friday, and that means bearish movement, slight re uh, retracement to the upside, and then the market pushing a bit lower, acting here as some sort of a, a negative market momentum candle, which acts here potentially, or would trans translate potentially towards falling prices, uh, boosting the Swiss franc here for now. Guys, if you have any trading opportunities, any trades which you look at, if, uh, if you have any ideas where the markets might go to, please let me know. What I would do here right now is uh, trying to answer a Kai's uh, a question. Kai was, not a question actually, Kai was saying he's long on the dollar against the Canadian dollar. And this is also what we can see here right now. The market keeps on creeping a bit higher. Let's look on the oil market here. The oil market also has weakened a fair bit. Weaker oil translates into a typically weaker Canadian dollar. Weaker Canadian dollar translates to the dollar moving higher. That's what we can see. Dollar cut pushing to the upside also might see and might push uh, this market somehow towards higher prices. And also Kai was asking, hey, he needs a dollar uh, stronger strengthening against the Australian dollar, which is exactly, exactly what we talked about right now. But I'm kind of really, uh, I'm in between zones. That's exactly my answer here. I'm in between zones. I don't see the market moving much. And uh, hence, obviously, long-term market uh, momentum, long-term market outlook potentially could uh, push this market further to the downside. My long-term assessment is still pretty much the same. We have this, uh, this left shoulder here. We have this high, sh this high point, the head, and the right shoulder here. The market subsequently could put, uh, push uh, this momentum to the downside. It's just not happening here uh, pretty much. But uh, of course, momentum-wise, we would, and I would still see that this is like, holy, holy cow. There are some guy harvesting tips on his motorbike here, which is also pushing me out sound-wise, but uh, bear me for a second, sorry about this. So we would do three contracts here in terms of falling price momentum. Uh, somehow, not right now, but below this market uh, area here, 77.60. Let me see if this makes somehow sense. 77.60 would be potentially uh, the area where I would see uh, the market potentially falling. If you're asking me, uh, of course, in this uh, trading opportunity or with this trading opportunity, I would not put any stop loss in play. We are kind of close, right? Just about eight pips here, maybe putting this trade slightly lower. But I would say, and I would see also that this market could push this momentum area here much lower should we see a weaker Australian, a stronger dollar in this case. Uh, Arnie says, as we said, uh, said uh, he's waiting. Whoops, someone else commented. Arnie said he's waiting for the dollar to strengthen. Kai is uh, Kai's question we've uh, hopefully answered right now. Trevor said uh, a strong dollar, gold back below 1800. And that's another great and important one to look at. The gold price has moved higher and is still creeping to the upside. And that's exactly one of my highest appreciation market momentum ideas here. Gold price moving to the upside. We can see silver somehow trading a bit lower. So the markets are not giving us anything much. And I'm pretty much honest with you guys here for now. We might just see that there's not much of a changing momentum in markets uh, going to be expected. If I am here talking to you guys right now, I might say, we could see a kind of a non-event happening here, which is not what I would expect, but uh, which is what we might see. And hence, I would say we should really uh, trade this market market with caution. So to really sum it up, pound Swissy, we're in our, in our short trade, which is uh, at the moment somehow in a bit of a drawdown. So let's uh, bring this one up and uh, assess here the open opportunity. Whoop, where is the... I'm missing the pound swissy. Where's the pound swissy? There's the pound swissy. So it's uh, moving off the long term market. This is not really of a big impact here regarding the uh, NFP figure. So we can kind of leave this one out behind. We, of course, should focus on silver, which keeps pushing lower, which looks great. So we already have one trade, which is up and running. The stop loss in this case, I would also keep up here at this area so nothing much to change we are in a short position here which means we are betting on a stronger dollar 
So technically, we should also see and look for some other opportunity here where we might see that the dollar could weaken somehow further. The weakening dollar, we could see against some sort of other currency pairs. But to be honest, we are, I don't really see this going to happen, despite that we might get a weaker opportunity here. We might get a weaker US dollar here, which seemingly, of course, is what we should really take a look at. So how about trading and looking at the dollar against the Japanese yen? That's exactly what I would say. Australia dollar short. We could see the dollar weakening here, of course. And that would be the, uh, uh, the uh, dollar against the Japanese yen. And I would say, let's just do a sell order here in this case. Sell stop. We kind of really evaluate if things might make sense. 10920. So we got uh, we got uh, both sides here aligned. We got both sides here. Uh, oops, 109. Sorry, 10910. That's wrong. 10910. So we get some sort of an idea here where the market could give us uh, some sort of negative momentum. Should we really see that this market is uh, pushing to the downside? And uh, should we see that this market really kind of uh, offers us this uh, negative price movement? To be in this case. So I'm pretty much lined up. I'll keep these uh, three trades on and I keep focusing on these uh, three positions here where I would say uh, we might uh, really kind of, of course, uh, see different momentum. We might see also some pairs moving differently comparing it to others. But uh, my assessment here, of course, uh, is going to stay the same, which means uh, until further notice, I would really focus on these trading pairs. Here, I would really focus on what we have uh, got, uh, what we've got on the charts. I would focus on what we've talked about, and then, of course, really try to assess uh, what we might see. Guys, can you look on uh, gold versus dollar? Says Salma. I think I've just did, so no need to repeat that. Strong dollar gold back below 1800. Says Trevor or asks uh, Trevor. We talked about this here. Alex is asking. He's predicting better than expected numbers and bullish on dollar cat. At the same time, I believe weaker Canadian dollar data, which is also an interesting story here right now, because we have also numbers from Canada. And we should also keep an eye, of course, on the Canadian data here and on the uh, loony, the uh, so-called Canadian dollar, in order to see and uh, uh, really kind of get an insight, some sort of insights on the dollar against the Canadian. Um, let's do this also. And let's, why do I not see this? That's the dollar cat. Kind of interesting. Kind of interesting, and we see how we see how this market goes if we uh, wait and uh, check out the news which are coming out as we uh, kind of speak here right now. Guys, if you have any questions, any further questions regarding, of course, uh, your market ideas, uh, let me know. So far, we can see dollar yen lower. You can see silver popping to the upside. Dollar Japanese yen is the trade to move on. Look for okay. Dollar yen. That's it. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. Let's take profit here. Dollar yen. We close. That's a winning trade. The silver market moves somehow higher. Uh, let's close out the silver market. That's what I want to do. Pound Swissy moves lower, and I think from that moment on, and from that uh, market momentum, we really take it as is. Guys, nice webinar. We've made some bucks trading the dollar against the Japanese yen. We've taken profit out of this market here. Don't want to see the market uh, popping back to the upside. We closed our silver market in a bit of a, a drawdown here. Australian dollar, we keep an eye on, of course, here in the next couple of hours. We also happily can say so far that uh, the pound Swissy is working in our favor. It's great to see also that the pound Swissy obviously is uh, helping our assessment and that the pound Swissy is really moving further into our market direction. So that's obviously what we would expect here. Happy trading, happy weekend, guys. Woo, for the ones staying in to this trade here, it's really moving nicely. We were able to kind of really do something here. Alex says also the number has been like really stunningly fuck shit, to be honest, in <clears throat> wrong German in English language, 266,000. The crisis far more than anything, but it's not over. Definitely here, we need maybe more vaccinations. We need more uh, kind of really participation here in general. So we'll have, and that's somehow for the conspiracy theorists, that's something on the eyes of the Fed, which is helping the Fed. So the Fed likely can keep 
staying on with their assessment here. We need more support for the financial markets. No, we need more support for the workforce. And hence, obviously, I would also not wonder if we see soon that bond yields keep pushing uh, to the upside. Guys, looking through your questions. Um, pretty the better number says Alex. Okay, can you take a look? Gold versus dollar. Guys, I think we've done it so far. Pretty much a nice session here. You've uh, likely been able, or you would have likely been able to make some money also with our idea here with the dollar yen to the downside. We closed the uh, silver market here. Uh, technically, in one of my portfolios, I'm still long silver. Why that? I'm playing silver off the definitely monthly and weekly chart here as much as I'm long with gold. If you have been telling me that uh, you didn't know about it, guys, for weeks, for months, for kind of years also, I've been talking to you saying that gold is a definite buy here. I tried and burned myself a little bit here uh, buying, sorry, selling the silver market, just a small loss. But we had uh, also our other trade here, the dollar Jeppy, which was a winning trade. Guys, happy weekend. See you next week. I'm looking highly forward on Monday to talk again with uh, my good friend here, Ma uh, Marshall to check out what he has to say fundamentally about the markets. I think we had some good trading opportunities. We took it by the tail. We grabbed it by the tail that Donald Trump would have not said. But uh, anyways, we've made some tips. Guys, see you next week. Take care, everyone. Happy weekend after all. Bye-bye.